there's a dialogue that needs to happen between investor and entrepreneur, uh, and hopefully some of what we'll talk about this afternoon will, will help you have that dialogue in a productive way. Ultimately, business valuation comes down to what do we expect the cash flow to be delivered back to the investor, and how do we discount for the level of risk involved in the cash flows that we're expecting. So in a mature business, that's very easy, or not very easy, somewhat easy to do, because you have a set of cash flows, you have a, um, uh, you've got a way and, and, a, and an easier way to put that financial model together in a, uh, in a seed or a startup round that's almost impossible to do with any level of confidence or, or uh, conviction. So valuations of startups, uh, much more complicated. You don't have any financials to use. You might have a financial model only as good as the assumptions and, and how well thought out those are. Um, but I think, and I'm guessing that you that have been through a seed round as an investor in particular will appreciate this, the valuation conversation can be very distracting. Um, I, I've talked to some investors who say, look, if I'm talking to an entrepreneur more than 15 minutes or so uh, in the course of our dialogue around valuation, I probably have the wrong entrepreneur. The conversations really need to be about team and market and how do we get this business to be a $50 million business. Those are the conversations that investors want to talk about. If you're spending an inordinate amount of time around trying to justify a certain valuation, you probably will chase off uh, at least the, the smarter of the investors because, again, there's not a lot of certainty here. But ultimately, you want, to, you want to focus on how do we make this business successful, and that's why I say this whole valuation conversation can be a um, and ultimately, as Brian said, you know, it's a negotiation, right? But, but don't overplay that on either side, either as an investor or as an entrepreneur. I'm going to explain this concept called divergence, which is when we say an angel gets back five to ten times their investment, that doesn't mean that the value of the business increases five to ten times. That means that the value of the business probably increases 30 times. And I'll explain to you why that is. So we call this divergence. Um, I pulled this out. I think this was, uh, I can't remember the name of this company, but got, got the data on the different um, share prices. So across that top, top line, you'll see the angel round, the ABC round, the IPO. And that was the dollars per share that were paid at those different rounds, right? The pre-money value, remember we talked about pre-money value is, the, is the, uh, the second line there. The money invested. You add those two together, you get the post-money value. Everybody with me? The angel equity as a percentage of total equity. So there's something kind of weird here, right? When you look at the, the post-value, uh, post-money value of the company from angel round to IPO, it increased something like 284 times, right? So this was a this was not a home run. This was a like grand slam puke for this investor, but there. Uh, the share price only increased about 36 and a half times. You see that? 74 cents up to the $74. Um, and then you uh, look at the, uh, well, I'm sorry, from the, the round A to the IPO. If you look at the reason why that angel equity continues to decrease is because you're continuing to have to raise capital, right? There, there's dilution there. But it's not, hopefully, in, in this particular case, it's not a one-for-one -one dilution, right? Because the value of the company is continuing to increase. Now, so that's, that's going to give the angel dilution. Um, but that dilution number will shrink as the company gets more valuable. The best practices for entrepreneurs, at least what we see on, on our end, uh, have, a, have a business plan, you know, enough detail, not too much detail. Um, I also really encourage entrepreneurs to think critically about the key risk factors in their business and have game plans around those risks um, because I think every business has risk and, and startups have a, a, an exceedingly large degree of risk. But understanding what those key risk factors are, explaining that, explaining what your plans are around those, I think is, is, gives the investor more confidence that you've, you've thought through this.